Welcome back to the 2015 BYU Football Media Day live web chats. We're in the last interview of the first hour, and we're here with Chris Hoke and Omar Morgan. Guys, thanks for being here with us. Thanks this is an us. honor for me. So you guys only had one, you overlapped one year. Overlap. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So you were yep. a senior, you were a freshman. Was there any hazing? Going <laughs> no. No. Nothing like that. No. Not okay. Enough. No, no hazing at BYU. Everybody here is pretty good about dealing with the young guys and uh, making them feel comfortable, making them feel like they're part of the team. So that's what's a great thing about BYU. So you were with the Steelers for 10 years, and you were in the CFL for 11 years. Yes, ma'am. And you were the guy who had that famous interception of the Cotton Bowl. I'm sorry, but that's going to be brought up a lot of times today because that is what you're famous for here at BYU. So what was it like for you coming into the program after that that well, you know, win. I was on my mission when that happened. I okay. came here in 94, and the two years he was here, I was on my mission to come back and just be able to hear about that story, hear about what happened at the Cotton Bowl out in Dallas, Texas, and then really building on what took place. That was a really magical season for BYU. And then those next four years, we had some good years with a couple good runs. And so just hearing about Omar and his kind of the, the, the stories about what he did and the interception, that'll go down in, in famous times at BYU. Thank you. And what was going through your mind during that interception? What was that like for you? Well, the defensive end, Ed Keel, told me to back up and is going to run a slant. Yeah, so I, uh, I just, it's been 15 games and he's never once said that. So I said, hey, he must have a key. So I just backed up and listened to what he said and he threw the ball right to me and I caught it and I guess the rest is history. What was that like? What is that? That's like what you want as a football player in college. Those are the moments you live for. You don't for. appreciate it until afterwards. You just, I just made a play and it was great for the team. But the years after, it was kind of, you know, people talk about it a lot. And, you know, when I watch it over and over again now, it's like it was kind of a great play. But during the, during the time I did it, it wasn't such a big deal. <laughs> That's humble. Yeah. Way to go. It was cool when we got back here and they had a little uh, ceremony in the gym. But as far as the, the play in itself, when, during it, it was just, just trying to help the team, man. That's all. Omar, we had you on BYU Sports Nation on Monday, and you said <laughs> to look back at what we did is unreal as far as college football goes. I don't think we had a flaw. What makes you say that about that Cotton Bowl team? I mean, it was just that we had a, a lot of pieces. I, I was telling the, the guy a minute ago that um, we had two great tight ends, three great running backs. The offensive line was great. Defensive line was great. Great receivers. Uh, linebackers were great. Great coaches. Great staff. Everything was just great, man. And I, I honestly couldn't tell you that was it was one position that was we had a problem with, man. I, I think we, we were just we we were all around a good team, and I, and I honestly believe. Looking back now, we didn't have a flaw. Chris, when you were here, you guys had quite the D-line. You had Ryan Denny, Brett Kiesel, uh, yourself, yep. Hans Sintema, Olsen. He Sintema said he was your boy. Yeah, well, Hans is a great friend of mine. And you know, we had a lot of guys. You know, even Byron Frisch the year before. Right. You know, he went to Tennessee Titans in the second round. You know, I went to the NFL. Hans Olsen went to the NFL. L. Ryan Denny spent a lot, number of years with the Buffalo Bills. Satema Nolan went to the Patriots. All those guys that played in that time together. I mean, it was a great bunch of, of the players. What's it like for you guys coming back here to Provo after all these years, coming back and seeing the stadium, some of your old teammates? Brett, we'll start with you. What's that like? Oh, I love coming back here. I love, that's why I said, you know, this, we just started this morning and we're already running behind schedule because you're running into guys you haven't seen in a long time. And you're seeing these guys you want to catch up. How's your family doing? What have you been up to? And you really have a connection here at BYU and, and it's really deep. It's, it's humbling to me to, to just sit by this guy and Chad Lewis and Ty Detman. It's truly amazing to me. It's, it's just an honor, I man. Like I say, I'm, I'm in L.A. every day, so it's not a lot of BYU history there. But coming here and watching these guys on TV, it's, it's, it's great. And meeting them in person and seeing them again in person, I feel like a little kid. <laughs> it's great. Chris, what was your what moment sticks out to you the most in your BYU football career? You know what? I, I think the, the one moment for me that sticks out is um, – it, it, it's just that last time at, at Utah when we played against Utah and Brandon Domi came into the game and he drove us down the field and won that football game. We're behind and those games against Utah were always so tough and it was always back and forth and it was always a close game and we thought we had lost that game and here comes Brandon off the bench and he drives us down the field and wins that football game and that was just to end that season, end it that way was a great thing. They call that Lavelle's miracle send off, yeah. something like that. That was one of his, that was his last year. <laughs> as a coach. So what's it like coming back and seeing Lavelle Edwards name on that stadium Omar? It's um, he deserved it. He deserved it before he got it. He I mean he he's 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 BYU. When you think of BYU you think about Lavelle Edwards. So he deserves everything he gets he deserves. 
Other than that interception, what is your what moment sticks out to you? The, the most? Utah games playing against Utah, man, was was amazing. The atmosphere was always great, regardless of the record. The atmosphere was great, and the Provo fans, BYU fans, traveled when we played. It, it was like a home game for us, man. But it was always so. Even Utah State was a tough, gritty game, man. So. Uh, most definitely the Utah games where, where, where they sticks out the most in my head. By the way, I have a Canadian friend and he's like, oh my gosh, Omar is one of my favorite players of all time in what the part CFL. Of is he from? I couldn't tell you, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> dang it, I should have checked that before, but I'm not sure. But he said you're one of his favorite players. He, he made sure he reached out to me on Facebook so I could well, give him a shout out for you. Tell him I said thank you and I appreciate it. So you both had, a, again, time in the CFL and the NFL. What are you guys up to now? I mean, now I'm back in Pittsburgh still, and I'm um, doing a lot with the, actually the Steelers. I'm on the Steelers radio network. I'm on the Steelers TV network as well. So I um, do a lot of broadcasting, commentary. It's a lot of fun. I'm um, involved in the community, involved in some real estate back there. Seems like there's never a dull moment in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, I'm a, I have a convenience store in L.A., and I'm coaching my son's high school football team, which he's actually getting recruited by BYU, okay. so it's kind of interesting. That's right. So what's it like being on the other side of things, being on the media side after playing for so long? Well, it's, it's tough. You got to walk a fine line because I'm going yeah. back and now interviewing other players that I played with. Yeah. And so you got to make sure that you ask the right questions and be able to keep confidences, and you got to be able to, you know, share things that they're okay with. So it's really a fine line of figuring out what you can share, what you can't share, um, what you can say, what you can't say. Mm -hmm. That took place in the locker room. So I, I've had a lot of fun doing it. I bet yeah. it is fun being on this side sometimes. It is. Omar, you mentioned you have a convenience store. You're coaching your son's uh, football team. What's it like being in a professional league for that many years and then kind of coming back to be a regular guy? What's it's, that transition like? It's, it's okay. I, I'm a fan now. I'm a fan of football, man, and I just watch and uh, work in my store and coach my son. Coaching my son is really awesome because you, you see so much, and he think he knows a lot, but he doesn't he know anything. But um, <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm just turning into a fan. I'm just a fan of the game, and you know, you, you see everything that you didn't see while you're playing, man. And it's, it's just great to just just watch sports in general. So, what would you guys say is the biggest fundamental difference between college football when you played and now? Oh man, college football when I played and now the guys are so much bigger, faster, and stronger. And once you say that, I mean these guys now, I mean you got D linemen that are running like linebackers, hmm. and you got linebackers running like DBs. And DBs that are hitting like D linemen. I mean, it's it's just a different ball game now when we play, but still, the the, the fundamentals of the game are still the same. And if you don't, pl if you're not fundamentally sound, you're not going to win the battles. I totally agree, and I, and I think they have so many resources. Technology has changed a lot. Like I was at my son's practice the other day, and they're they're taping the practice, and and they they they're watching it on the iPad at the same time they're taping it. So they didn't even have iPads or things of that nature when I played, but. Uh, like you said, the athletes are they're much bigger and stronger and faster now. I don't know how much you guys follow uh, BYU football nowadays, but what are your expectations for this very tough 2015 season? Well, I always have high expectations. I always want BYU to do well because if they don't, I hear it back in Pittsburgh, <laughs> hear from all my friends out there. So I'm hoping that we have a great season. But I also know the challenges that face us in 2015. We've got a tough schedule. You know, you're coming out. Uh, you got Taysom. Hopefully he'll be healthy. Hopefully Jamal Williams will be healthy on, on, at the running back position. And uh, that defense is going to step up and stand tall because they're going to face some stiff challenges come 2015. See, I, I was on the talk show the other day, and I, uh, they asked me the same question. I think the quarterback is one of the best players in the country. When he's healthy. When he's healthy. Yeah. And when he's healthy. When he's healthy. And I think if he's healthy, the first couple of games, he'll probably be the best player on the field. And with him being the best player on the field, you guys have a chance to do something special. The challenge is for the BYU coaches to find a way to keep him on the football field, is to find a way to let him go out there and be the athlete he is, let him throw the football and run the football, but keep it to a minimum so they can keep him on the field for the whole season. You think he's willing to do that? Does he want to play the whole season? That's the question. Does he want to play, or does he want to watch the rest of the year on the bench? I totally agree. So, so as, a, as a defensive player, when you see the quarterback running, you, you try to you try to hurt him. You want to hurt him. You want to, you want to get him out of the game. Well, a guy like him too. He's, he's a whole offense. He's a whole offense. You don't you don't try to hurt him, you know. But you want to hit him like he's a running back because that's what he's out there trying to do. You want to take some football life out right. of him, especially probably when you know he's he's the the biggest part of the team as well. He is. He is. Real quick, last question. Along these same lines, what advice would you give this 2015 team? Man, I, I would just say just go out there and give everything you've got. You've got nothing to lose. I mean, right now, BYU, people aren't looking at us having a good year. 
And I love the underdog role. I love when people are counting you out. So go out there and put everything you've got in the next two months preparing for the season. And when you get out in that field against these guys, you got nothing to lose. Lay it all out on the football field, and hopefully the chips will fall on the side of BYU. I would say the same thing. Work hard, man, and don't take anything for granted. You know, play every play like it's your last, and don't take anything for granted. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here with us. I'm excited to see you on Four Decades of Dominance coming up here in just a little bit. And we're going to take a three-hour break, and then we're going to have some more live web chats with former players and coaches and current players. See you in a bit.